It's Indiana time. Okay. At the podium, Adam Silver is announcing the pick number seven to the Indiana Pacers. Bilal Kula Bali. Wow. No. Bilal. Okay. Kula Bali. This smells trady to me. This smells know. trady to me as well. Um, I wonder if this is to Utah. Just genuinely, I wonder if this wanting is to, to leapfrog Washington maybe and make sure because yes. that, that seems like a Washington guy. Maybe it's Washington moving up a spot and not letting could, Utah do that. Could be Washington moving up a spot, not letting Utah yeah. do that. And that's, that's possible. Poss and that's possible because both Jarris and Hendricks are here, where Indiana might feel comfortable leveraging this for more assets and moving down to either eight or nine. Okay, I'm with you. It's one of those two. I wonder if it could be that. Honestly, like maybe Indiana just like trick the hell out of us I don't like know. the whole way because <laughs> indiana the only names i've heard are fours and i am uh this is a, this is an interesting one for sure yeah, you, you may have to keep your eyes on peeled on the uh the trade possibilities here because i, I have this on mute and i don't know if uh if or how they're gonna scroll that across the screen but ooh, cool bali let's talk cool bali okay so yes okay so What's happening here is exactly what we said. According to Shams nine seconds ago, Indiana is selecting Jarris Walker at number eight via the Wizards in a seven for eight flop. Washington is sending two second round picks to the Pacers to move up for Bilal Hulabali. Uh, this makes sense to me. I would imagine they were trying to beat Utah up the board here. Um, or beat maybe Oklahoma City up the board here. Yeah. But Koulibaly is the guy that I wrote about in the mock as the guy that I thought was most likely to be traded up for in this class and to crash that top group in the top 10. Um, you are not as high on Koulibaly as I am. No. So maybe I will talk a bit about Bilal because – I think he is an incredibly intriguing, informed bet for a team to make. He is a six foot seven to six foot eight wing with seven foot two wingspan. He is more than anything right now great on defense. Uh, he is incredibly effective at using his length in his on ball prowess. He is just a monster. Uh, Mikhail Bridges like in the French league at being able to get his length into those like ball handler space right? It makes it very, very tricky, I think, for opposing ball handlers to try and be able to separate from him. Now, the issue with Koulibaly is that you look at his overall offensive usage and it's very low. Uh, even over this little run here where he's been quite good and has scored 15 points, there were only a couple of games in that run in the French League playoffs where he really had like 15 and was taking guys off the bounce and running ball screens and stuff. A lot of them come on catch and shoots, cuts, things like that. Overall, his offensive usage this season in the French league was equivalent to something like Isaac Okoro's usage with the Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> Having said that, if you watch him at lower levels, what you will see is a player who lives in the paint because nobody in the Espoirs League in France can stay in front of him. It's an informed bet. You're betting on tools here. He's a great athlete. He has incredible length. He has real athleticism. Like, he has great quickness. Like, yeah. he has real bursts vertically. He's a great transition player. Honestly, pairing him with Tyus Jones and Jordan Poole, I think makes a ton of sense for sure. the Washington Wizards moving forward. Sure. I, I get the tools argument. I always ask the question, can you develop feel? Uh, that's yep. something I don't really know. And if you're not sure, or if you are sure of that answer, either way, I have a tough time rationalizing him above Cam Whitmore because I think Cam is an equally explosive athlete in a lot of different ways, but a little bit more of a shot creator and proven shooter. Um, Koulibaly is not. But, a by very... the way, I, I just want to call call out real quick. This board has gone in a direction where I think something absolutely bonkers could happen with Utah here at nine. And I, I just want people to be prepared for that. Okay. If that happens. Okay. Um, 
there there was one there was one road where this thing could happen like one set of outs basically where this thing could happen and i'm very curious now to see if it does oh god you're gonna have me sweating it out until then um yeah like kula bali i am i am a risk averse person sam like I don't go on Ferris wheels or roller coasters. It's just it, in my nature to be more risk averse. The really late season rise of a small sample of games. It's not enough to swing me. I needed more. I needed to be proven a little bit more. We didn't get that yeah. from Kula Bali. I don't love the feel with the ball in his hands. I'm a little bit worried. Adam Silver is back to the podium here with the eighth pick, which we know is now going to Indiana. I've and said it, who this is. Yeah, it is, so. it is Jairus Walker. It's Jairus Walker. It's Jairus Walker. Uh, so Jairus Walker is a perfect fit, I think, in Indiana. Yep. This is where I really wanted him to end up because you put him next to a spacing center in Miles Turner, who is an awesome drop coverage big. And what Jairus Walker is fucking unbelievable at is playing as the help man in the corner playing in a wide variety of scramble situations and being able to fly around defensively and be incredibly long and active, right? This is an awesome, awesome fit for him. I also love the idea of him being able to act in ball screens with Tyrese Halliburton, yep. play in short roles when teams put two on the ball against Tyrese Halliburton and make high level passing decisions. This is like, I'm not saying he's going to be Draymond Green. That is the role that I think Indiana will utilize him in. Using his passing ability to take advantage of four on three situations, using his uh, overall IQ to be able to try to beat defenses, using his length and athleticism to hopefully get to the basket and his ability to handle the ball. I love this pick. This is yeah. uh, this is an A. Like this is they they could not have handled this better. I think and a home run for for Jarris as well to be able to join an up and coming franchise and organization where he has a clear pathway and role forward that's kind of built around him. So uh, I think this this makes a lot of sense as a front court partner with Miles Turner. You talked about Jarris and, and the great things that he brings on both ends, particularly on defense as a, a help protector at the rim. I think that what Indiana would love is to find a way for opposing teams to stop putting their their four man on Miles Turner. That you need a yeah. big a big guy who plays the four, who can space teams out on the perimeter, make plays in different areas, but prevents teams from cross matching in the front court. Jarris does need to be able to shoot it in order for that to be actualized. I yeah. have heard good things about the shot and its progression. I think he was fine this year at Houston. wasn't great by any means, but an underrated player in terms of the diversity of his offensive game. We didn't see that on full display at Houston. He showed it at lower levels. He's a talented playmaker with the ball in his hands. And if he can find a way to tap into using his physical strength to bully guys over instead of taking a million and a half floaters and runners in the mid-range area, he's going to yep. be a really potent role player. Okay. The good news is that it seems like Utah did not do something crazy. Uh, th this makes me happy. I have seen the pick. Uh, I, I can w Utah fans can relax a little bit, which is good. Okay, um, yeah, I, I had I had some concerns. Uh, I I'll explain after sixteen. Maybe is a fair way to put it. Uh, okay, with Jarris moving forward within that offense, you now have. Ben Matherin, you now have Jairus Walker, you now have uh, Tyrese Halliburton is your core. I think this is a really fun question here from Albert Singleton. Prospect Wars, immediately off the top of your head, Scotty Barnes versus Jairus Walker versus Jeremy Sohan. In each of the last three drafts, top 10 picks, guys that you're hoping to get similar things out of. How do you rank these three? Scotty one, Jairus two, Sohan three. I would go Scotty one, Sohan two, Jarris three. And the only reason I would take Sohan is I think he's a little bit more fluid athletically yes. than what Jarris is. Uh, I think Jarris probably has better feel for the game as a passer, and I think he has a little bit more upside as a shooter. Maybe it is Jarris. <laughs> I think Sohan I think Sohan actually has more routes to score effectively, though, weirdly. 
Like I think Sohan can play in ball screens as a ball handler better, whereas Walker is like more of a roller as a big kind of. Yeah. It's yeah. that's a weird one. That's a good I'm question. Jarrus. It's a uh, yeah. It's a phenomenal question. So Did you like good. Sohan last year? I think I had him like somewhere in the eleven to thirteen range. Okay. Yeah, I had him at seven, six or seven last year. So I was very high and everything I saw this year yeah. is uh is something that I thought we would see and something that I like. Okay. Uh, his silver gone up to take this pick yet? No, we're actually on, I don't want to call it a commercial. I don't think it's a commercial, but it's okay. something. It's something. It's something. They're, they're TVing right now. I don't watch a lot of TV. I can't tell you what commercials are these days. They are TVing right now is how you just referred to that. I love it. Uh, okay. Does anybody have some questions? Maybe we'll talk about that uh, sure. as we go. Uh, Barry Johnson asks, is Sohan a more versatile defender than Walker? I think he's a more versatile on ball defender. I think Walker yeah. is a more versatile, versatile off ball defender. Yeah. And I prefer Walker scaling up to guard fives as opposed to Sohan. I agree with that as well. Uh, different defenders. Walker probably is a little bit more upside defensively, I would say. Uh, Luke B, two seconds for moving down one spot. Thoughts on that? I think Indiana was taking Jarris Walker at seven. So to get to first is great. And for Utah uh, to, or no, for, uh, I'm sorry, Washington to move up uh, one spot to give up two of the like okay. billion second round picks they've acquired in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Sure. Sounds right. Yep. Yeah. Not really a problem with it. Smart leveraging by Indiana and, when you're starting to rebuild like Washington and you know, that's your guy, like go get your guy. Yep. Uh, Rodrigo Sal, uh, Rodrigo Silos. Uh, what is Bilal's ceiling? Oh, what is Bilal's ceiling? It, it's probably pretty close to what Mikhail Bridges is right now. The floor is lower by a substantial amount, but it is probably somewhat close to what Mikhail's ceiling is. Yeah. I think, I think it's probably, like he reminds me of a Scotty Barnes ish type of player a lot. Not as high feel, but he reminds me a little bit of a Scotty Barnes ish type of player. Yeah. Uh, AJ Wall asks Kobe falls to 16. I'm assuming that's Kobe Bufkin. I'd be pretty staggered if yeah. that happened, to be honest. Um, I do not see that happening. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. I don't know what Dallas is going to do at 10, to be honest. Uh, has has this pick happened yet, Adam? Because we're trying to stay with the TV. No, podcast. there's Cause some clar Claritin something commercial. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I know who this is, and I can explain something on Dallas here momentarily. Um, let's see here. Quick recap: Oaks Marley, good call. So at number one, Victor Wembanyama. Number two, Brandon Miller going to the Charlotte Hornets. Number three, Scoot Henderson going to the Portland Trailblazers. Number four, Amen Thompson's going to the Houston Rockets. Number five, Asar Thompson's going to the Detroit Pistons. Number six, Anthony Black is going to the Orlando Magic. Number seven, Bilal Koulibaly is going to the Washington Wizards via trade from the Indiana Pacers. The Pacers move down one spot and select Jarris Walker. 